Videos uh, represent, you know, on one side the difficulties that patients have to face and simple things like, you know, like you know, doing shopping or just crossing the street or just, you know, being with friends in a, in a, again, in a group that for us it's really easy and we don't even think how easy it is. For a patient it's a complex task. You know, just crossing a street may be something problematic, you know. Uh, you may face yourself really stopped in the middle of the street because your feet, you know, are like glue, you know, are fixed to the floor and you really can't walk. Um, this is really, um, this, is, this is a strange disease, I would say. This is, this is an intriguing disease. Um, you know, physicians use always, you know, uh, words like fluctuations, you know, motor complications, you know. Patients are mo have moments where they are great, you know, they can move, they can do whatever they want without any limitation, and five minutes later they are really blocked. We use the word on, it's like, like the TV, you know, it's on or it's off, and for a patient being off it's being, you know, immobile, it's not being able to walk, not being able to stand up from this chair. Um, and again, for physicians we use these, those words, fluctuations, motor fluctuations, being off and on, but for the family, it's something like having, you know, that person that it's okay now and it's completely unable to do anything five minutes later. So this is why this is happening. You know, this it probably is not willing to do anything. So it's like, if we, it's like if this was just a question of being, you know, uh, willing to do or not willing to do. It's an intriguing disease. It's a difficult disease. It may be, it's a cruel disease for the patients, for the families, for the caregivers. So everything that we can do in some way to explain the disease uh, to everybody, I think it's, a, it's an important cause. And nowadays, treating a disease, it's not just you know, making medicines available. It's everything, it's educating. It's making not just the medicines available. Nowadays, treating the disease, it's involving everybody. It's involving the nurses, you know, the speech therapists, you know, the physiotherapists, the social workers, the psychologist, it's everybody, you know. Again, we use this word multidisciplinary, that again, it's becoming fashion. But truly, Parkinson, it's one of the diseases where I think that word fits even better. Is it logic that you are using music and dancing as, uh, as a motive for your videos? And I would say, yes, it's, I think it's a, it, it's a great example. You know, uh, you know, first, dancing. Dancing, it's a form of exercise. It's a form of physical activity. And we know nowadays that physical activity, it's a beneficial intervention, so it improves the disease, so this is good. Then dancing, it's not just moving, it's not just, you know, being active. It's being active with the mind control. So we need to think how to, how to dance. So dancing, it's a combination of a, a cognitive exercise plus, you know, moving. And again, we are learning that this type of combination, what we call dual tasking, you know, cognitive intervention, physical intervention makes sense and it's helpful for PD patients. Then we learn a lot with patients. You know, patients teach us about many things. One of the things that we learn is that, that they use like cues. They use visual cues. What's a visual cue? It's there is that line in the floor. so. I walk using that line as a cue, so I try to put my feet over that line and it facilitates walking. I, we use, and patients use, you know, auditive cues, sound cues. That's why they use headphones. I have patients that arrive in the, in the consultation with headphones because they are listening to, you know, auditive cues. And it works. It facilitates walking.